So I did a thing, didn't I? I made that. That was the intro that I thought I'd uh, take a couple days to make and sort of revise. A couple days, it was a day. It wasn't a long project, as you can probably tell by general quality and stuff that I did. But it's gonna get better. I, I trust in myself that I will redo it at some point and remake it. But I've been doing a couple different things. Um, I haven't worked on a project this week. I've been working on like YouTube back-end stuff, trying to make sure that what I'm doing reaches the right people and that my content is valid for what I'm doing. So I did the intro. I did uh, a little a little logo thing down, down this side. This is the second time I filmed this because I pointed over here the last time. I'm horrible at these directions because there's another thing I did. Or I tried to do, didn't want to do. But there's a little logo down here, a little OD. I kind of want to get it on a mug at some point. I feel like it'd be cool on a mug. But, um, so I did those two things. I've also, if you listen carefully, I'll go quiet for a second. I've added music in. I thought I'd add some music uh, as a suggestion from a friend just to sort of give the quieter times a bit of meat and stuff going on. So now there's no quiet times here. There's always me or music. Yay. And then the third thing I did was uh, I've added in an end card to the end of the videos where you have a subscribe button and a video. Now, I did pre-record uh, an end clip to sort of add in every time and then I was like, mm, and I was talking to a friend and it seems lazy for me to just pre-record an end clip when I have plenty of time. So I'm going to be redoing the end clip every day that I do a video um, and hopefully that goes well. Admittedly, I'm horrible at pointing in the right directions. I think the end of the video there'll be a subscribe button here and a video there. Yes, maybe, who knows. Um, so that's sort of the stuff that I've done for now, back end wise. I've also added some tags in and like other little things, but that's the main thing that I've been doing between the last video and this video. Uh, and I'm gonna aim for every Tuesday upload. So I feel like Tuesday, just the day I started, so it'd be the day I continue doing it. Um, I will be talking today about my third year project, the one that I've just submitted and sort of showing it off and talking about what it is. It's based on uh, a previous uh, like robotic, rob robotician's work um, called Valentino Brandenburg and I'll show that off and stuff. I'll cut to the, the clip in a second of what I'm doing there and we'll go through sort of what's happening. I just want to sort of also say thanks for the support that's come from the first video. Hopefully this just continues on an upwards fashion because YouTube requires a lot for money. So we'll keep going, having fun, doing things. I've got a couple projects planned. Uh, I have to see if I can do them within a week because a week is quite a short amount of time for acquiring parts and stuff. Eventually I'll be ahead of myself in buying parts and producing, but for now I'm sort of working week to week. Um, I did film another video that I didn't like. I'll redo it at some point as well. I did, I actually did film a video in the week. Uh, this is filmed on the Tuesday because I'm prepared for things. Uh, I filmed a video about the difference between SLA and FDM 3D printers and which one I was going to buy. It didn't come across well. There was a whiteboard involved. It's in fact there, there, but it just, um, it didn't come out great. So I'm going to refilm that at some point, maybe even using like screen capture instead of a whiteboard, which makes my whiteboard even more redundant than when I first bought it, which is perfect. So I'm going to cut to, oh, I finished my tea and cut to the next clip of me showing off the Brandenburg vehicle. So I'm back. I finished my tea. Uh, and I've come back to now show you what is <laughs> kind of a year's worth of work, but I couldn't actually end up developing it. So I've got my little little device here. Um, I will show you what's going on a little bit, if I can do. Oh, it's never going to focus properly and you won't be able to see the small resistors that are here. So I'll talk it through a little bit and I'll sort of point where I can and maybe, just maybe, if I've become a good editor by the time, well, by the end of today, because as I said, I'm filming it today and it's uploading today, I'll add some pictures. Like if I move across a little bit, this is gonna be really bad if we don't add the pictures in, but there's space now here. And if there's a picture well, here, not an idiot brilliant. If there's not, 
bad, but it's fine. We'll see what we can get going. So, uh, <laughs> damn, this is a lot of pressure now. So, here is the device. What we have here is there's two LDRs up here, which are light dependent resistors. So what these are, are little diodes like LEDs, and they instead they take in the light and depending on how much light there is there, depends on how high or how low their resistance is, they have a set max and a set minimum. Oh, I'm getting into the picture space. Oh God, this is gonna require some editing. Set max and set minimum. And if you can hit those max and minimums, that's great. But otherwise the resistance varies between that. So what I'm able to do then, is I'm able to control each motor individually with one of these LDRs. And basically, the higher the resistance, the slower the motor speed in the, in the most basic sense. So if there's a lot of light on the left hand side, this is the right though, because I'm bad at sides. If there's a lot of resistance on this right hand side LDR, for example, this motor will turn slower, but if there's less light on this left one, this one won't turn as slow, allowing it to turn. But if there's a lot of light on both of them, they will stop. Or if there's a lot of light on the left and not on the right, it will turn the opposite direction. And that's how it sort of moves in a tank control start like sense, where the both of them drive forwards and you either slow down one to turn or you slow down the other to turn. And that's how tanks work. And that is the premise of this as well. Um, I will try and include pictures and circuit diagrams that I've done over here. Um, but this is the sort of basic premise. What I want to do is I want to develop this as I go anyway. And I think it'll be something I'll update here. I'd like to add in a potentiometer, which is a, it's a resistor that you can twist to adjust the resistance. So I would like to be able to add like a base level of resistance to these wheels so that they have a, both of them can be exactly the same because what you can't see is between the LDR and the motors I have a resistor array trying to match the exact resistance of the, uh, the base resistance of the LDR. So you can't see it because it's too small but it's, it's this clump of things here. Pitcher, maybe. My hand should be in the pitcher if I've done this correctly. If not, I look like a fool. Um, but then you can basically, because resistors don't all come from the factory exactly spot on for the same resistance, what I could do with the potentiometer is make fine adjustments to allow them to both be exactly the same um, by either say like having, having the right hand side on plus 10 resistance whereas the left on plus eight because maybe there was a two, uh, a two ohm difference. 2 ohm is a very small amount and it probably wouldn't be that, but I was just giving an example of numbers. And that is roughly what this is currently. It's um, in my initial proposal for my third year project, I was looking at 3D printing a small housing for it as well and building up a, I wanted either a dome or a flat clear top because I want the circuitry visible to people. It's because the whole premise of this was to take Valentina Brandenburg's work, develop onto it, and then I also wanted it to be a teaching aid, which if I've done this right, it technically is a teaching aid still. Um, there is a small cardboard piece though in this because again, lack of resources. And if I had the 3D printer I've spoken about many times before, this wouldn't be a problem. But it's, a, it's quite a neat little thing. I've got it just mounted on a breadboard for now and we will see sort of how I can develop it. I'm hoping to make like little toys out of this as well, which will sort of run away from lights, zooming around the room a little bit and just sort of see what I can do. But you can use other types of resistors as well with this. So you could use a thermistor, which is the same as an LDR, but instead it relies on heat. So if you heated up one of them versus not the other, and left that one cooler, it would turn, heat up both of them, it would stop. It's just depending on how hot it is, depends on the resistance output. Um, and I think the nice thing about this is there's actually no code that goes into this little toy. It is purely hardwired. So all of the, all of the signals don't go through like a high pass or low pass filter to be like, oh, if it hits this boundary, do this. If it hits this boundary, do this. It's just simply, taking an, the light input, 
and increasing or decreasing the resistance, which is uh, fascinating to me. And the premise behind Valentina Brandenburg's work was to mimic small creatures like bugs uh, and mimic their behaviorisms without a brain, like a uh, like an Arduino or something. But if you did add an Arduino into this, you could then do stuff like sound, which would be an interesting concept. So you could clap like really loud near one of them and it might run away. If you clapped to the right, it might run to the left. If you clapped to the left, it might run to the right and so forth. And I thought that was quite an interesting concept. And it like, you could even then at this point, because these machines only drive forwards. Uh, for example, if I projected light directly onto both the LDRs, it would just stop. But if you had an Arduino involved, you could say, if but light was on both of them, it would run backwards out of the light and like run away and cower. The concept though of Valentino Brandenburg's work is to display two main behaviorisms. Firstly, the display is fear or courage. So fear behaviorism would be the running away and cowardliness of it. So as I was saying, you project light onto one and it will drive away. You project light onto the other, it will drive the other way. But the courage one would say, if you project light onto one of them, it will drive towards the light. Or if you project light on both of them, it will drive forwards towards the light. So those were the characteristics I was trying to mimic. With this design, I went for the fear characteristic because it's a lot easier to see a response based on it driving away from the light. I will include a, a, a demo video I took. It's very dark because a lot of the characteristics for the fear one as well worked really well in the darkness. That was one of the things I was testing, whether the light noise would affect it or not. But anyway, that's the sort of base concept. I will do maybe a more in-depth video discussing the actual circuit and how I built everything in another episode but for now I just wanted to give like a concept overview and I wanted that start of the video to be talking about the changes I've done and we'll just continue on from here and I think I'll continue to design these and continue to keep everyone up to date with uh, the progress of my Valentino Brandenburg work. I almost forgot, uh, literally almost forgot in the fact that I did record this but the video's gone, absolutely gone, it's like 6.30 now so I need to get this finished. So this is the, the outro card. So, if I remember correctly, you can subscribe here, please be right, and you can find a new recommended video here. That should be about it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.